Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. Hey, so this is special. <laughs> it's, it's, if special is what you want to call it. <laughs> We've never podcasted in a separate location. I know. You're like, mm, what, 1,200 miles away currently? <laughs> yeah, and two hours ahead of you. It's weird. I don't approve. We've we've podcasted in a, other than our home location, but we've never podcasted separately. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to call it interesting. It's a little bit strange, but all right, whatever. I'll take it. It's better than nothing. <laughs> it, was like, it was like my flight today. I, I, I get to the airport and uh, I use like major airport specifications in order to get there in time. And I end up getting through security in like, what, five minutes? Yeah, it didn't seem like it took you very long. And then I get in there, I walk to the gate, confirm that it's the right place to be, and there's a million chairs to sit in. So I take my two bags and I set them on a chair next to me, and I'm sitting right on the end. So there's the second chair is blocked, and I'm sitting in the chair. And um, pretty soon it starts filling up, of course, because it's getting closer and closer to boarding time, and slowly filling up. And the first thing I notice is like a million kids, and I'm talking like under the age of three. <laughs> not talking like a million 10 year olds it's like a million little kids and they're fussy and they're grumpy and then a lot of them have car seats with them that they have to sit in and so i get up to ask when will we get seat assignments and you know remember i have two bags sitting right there nobody sitting next to me uh-huh get up i gotta get my seat assignments Tells me, oh, it'll be 10 minutes before boarding. We'll call you up. Okay, great. I turn around. Right away, what do I see? Someone sitting in my seat. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. So I move away. I grab my bags and I move away. And she leaves. Were you obnoxious so about it? <laughs> I didn't say a word. I just grabbed my bags. That's and awesome. And I went back. And sat down in the seat. That's um, really but funny. Then I, I sent you that picture of the horde of people at the gate trying to get in to the plane. Yeah. That's just probably the tip of the iceberg. So then, of course, the million kids get to board before anyone else. Of which course. is smart on their part. But do you know that I'm, of course, in the first group that boards after that? So we get in there, and you can't even get in the plane because somebody has, like, this massive car seat that they're trying to fit into one of these skinny little plane seats. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was like the Sherman tank of car seats. It was huge. Huge. <laughs> and we had to wait. And then, you know, I get my bag put away, and I sit down, and then this man shows up, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm glad you're here early because I hate it when people who sit in my row come like at the last second and <laughs> get you and make me move. So that yeah. Sit. Yeah. So he says, Hey, do you mind if uh, my friend comes and sits here and you can sit in his seat? I'm like, I don't care. What, what row is he in? He goes, He's in the third row in the middle seat. So literally, I just moved up two, two rows. Um, but in the end, from what I could see, it worked out better because this guy was kind of a bigger guy. There was another bigger guy by the window, and I would have been stuck between the two of them. Instead, I was next to this really skinny little woman and a really skinny little guy, and I had plenty of room. Um, and actually, the row we were in, the third row, for some reason, it wasn't an emergency exit row, but it was a lot more foot room, a lot more leg room than that row. Interesting. It was weird. Um, so then we're flying, and like even with noise-canceling headphones in my ear... You can hear kids just constantly. Yeah. Are we there yet? When are we getting there? 
How come it's taking so long? Like, <laughs> come on. Well, they are did kids. You not prepare, but did you not prepare your child ahead of time? <laughs> Let's be real. Most people are too, I don't know, oblivious to prepare their children ahead of time for a flight. Well, I have to say, downloadable Netflix for the win. I like that. That was good. <laughs> I figured as much. But see, that's why I only got through one and a half shows, because I also watched all those YouTube videos that I had to watch in preparation for tomorrow. Oh, so, did you? Yeah, so I got, that was about almost an hour's worth of videos. None of that was very helpful, though, because all it was talking about was um, the NetSuite software and how it works, and why it's so popular. And, oh, really? Uh, sort of like background material. Oh. For tomorrow. That's lame. But yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of useless. But uh, whatever. I think if you're, I think if you're a newbie um, to the software, it probably would have been helpful, but it didn't do anything. Because you're not a newbie. Who knew? So, um, but you had something you wanted to mention that you've been chomping at the bit to talk about for like a week. Yes, I've been so excited to talk about it that I completely forgot what I wanted to talk about before we decided to podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it that you wanted to talk we about? went to that awards ceremony thing. <laughs> and that lady... Okay, so the bleachers were like... I don't know, 50% full, which isn't alarming given the size if, of the crowd. If that. Right, if that. Right. And then this lady decides she's going to sit on the little teeny tiny bleachers like right in front of me. And I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming some of the people who listen to our podcast have not met me before, but I'm almost six feet tall. <laughs> like... There is not enough room for my knees and her body in that little space. So then everybody stands up for the Pledge of Allegiance and then they're sitting back down and she pretty much sat in my lap. I was like, this is the most offensive thing ever. Couldn't you slide over like one entire seat and not be a colossal pain in the keister? I don't know. Well, but doesn't that sort of fit into themes that we've discussed before, like people being oblivious to um, people that are surrounding them and people oblivious to other people's needs and wants and they just do whatever they want. I do not know how you can be oblivious to somebody else's personal space when you rammed your back into their kneecaps at least twice. Well, I think she thought you were a chair. <laughs> I just think it's interesting because it's it's like kind of like the people of Costco. You know? Well, if I'm a chair, they, the next time we go somewhere, I'm going to sharpen my kneecaps before we go. <laughs> but see, while you were fighting that battle, all I did was refuse to move my legs. And the guy that tried to sit in front of me moved over. Yes, he did. And then he was sitting in front of Mitchell. Eventually. You know, you know what's really interesting? What? They seem to have made those bleachers, which were at a high school, which have kids from like 15 years old until like 18 or 19 years old. Uh huh. And they seem to have made them for 11 year olds. I don't even think it's for 11 year olds. I think they made them for six year olds. You are literally on top of the person. Like it's body. asinine. High school students are almost adult size. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know. It, it didn't make any sense to me that, that it was built that way, but it is. And, and it, it's funny because the, <laughs> the junior high, the gym, the bleachers aren't that close together. They're close, but they're not that no, close No, the junior together. high ones are much more comfortable, which is shocking because, you know, junior high kids are bound to be smaller than high school kids. Duh. Yeah, entirely my point. And that's entirely my point. Oh, it's just I ridiculous. It. I can't even. But I, I was thinking I was thinking of you today because I was waiting at the airport and I was looking at Facebook and I think I was in the Huntington Beach group and someone was complaining about they went to Costco on a Sunday and they said that they think that 
every single inconsiderate moron on earth descended upon Costco they while do. they were there. They do. It's it's yeah. That's how I feel about Costco. That person needs to be my new friend. It was it was fun. <laughs> you met my um doppelganger apparently yeah. on the Huntington Beach group. Which is funny because it's exactly I mean we've had three episodes about Costco. And there and, and other than the one where we complained about the the cashier that was really rude when the card yes. system went down. The other two are entirely about that exact topic that people go to Costco and like they stand in the aisle and they'll look around like, Oh, I've never been in Costco before. Isn't this an amazing no. place? And meanwhile, 75 people are lined up behind them trying to get through. Oh, I hate Costco. It's why I opted to go and get eggs and water at Ralph's instead of going to Costco on Friday. You think actually that was on Sunday. No, it wasn't. It was Friday when you were meeting the people at their store, and then the second time you went, that was Sunday. That's right. Yeah. I went twice. Twice. I forgot. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. It's exactly the same. It's why I hate getting things out of the frozen food area, where they have those big glass doors. Because someone always stands right in front of the door, just staring inside. And then you need to get in there and open the door, and you can't. And then you have to feel all awkward saying, excuse me, I need to reach in there and get that ice cream. Or right, and they never move nicely. And they don't care. You just don't care. They're always a colossal bag of jerks. Literally, literally what it comes down to, they just don't care. Can so, I tell you something you know, else that annoys me? You deal with it. Sure. The hockey game? It's four to nothing. It's going to game seven. There's only five oh, minutes no. left. Winnipeg is completely fucked. I give up. I can't even watch it. Wow. Well, but game seven, the game seven's at home, so advantage. Game seven's in Nashville. Jets. Oh, that's right, because yeah. game six was in Winnipeg. They're currently getting their ass Whoops. kicked at Didn't home. Think about that. Wow. I can't even. That's I don't even want to. No. I'm just. Well, Washington eliminated Pittsburgh tonight. Well, that's fun. Two to one in overtime. And my Golden Knights moved on yesterday. Three yep. to one. Yep. Everybody else's hockey teams move forward. Except for mine. They suck. I give up. <laughs> that's just crazy. But I warned you ahead of time that. Nashville team doesn't ever give up. Well, whatever. It is what it is. They fight hard. It's funny because I'm kind of looking at the NHL.com site right now, and I've not watched this video yet. I think I will tomorrow, where there's like Snoop Dogg with a NHL jersey on, and it says Hockey 101 with Snoop. I bet you Sounds like something funny. you would like. Yeah, I'm betting it would be funny. <laughs> See, I couldn't win in the Pittsburgh and Washington series because I don't like Alexander Ovechkin and I don't like Sidney Crosby. So no matter who won, someone that I don't like is going to move forward. Ah, game over. Crap, yeah, damn it. Hot. Piece of shit game. Now it's 3-3, three to three, game 7. It's a one-game series. That's crazy, right? They play all these six games, and now it's going to come down to whatever happens in one single the game. The good news is, good news is, the Jets haven't let Nashville win twice in a row yet. So, yeah. just keep it yeah. up. Maybe they have a chance, but I'm not going to pay any attention. I'm turning notifications off of the NHL app. I don't care. I will just not look. Do you know that only three teams have made it to the conference final in their first season? Wow. The last time was 1968. What team was it? St. Louis oh. Blues. Prior to that, it was 1918. Wow. Are you noticing a trend? <laughs> 1918. 
How bizarre is that? Well, first they have to make it to the final for it to be bizarre. But once they make it to the final... No, they already made it to the conference final. They Uh won their game the other day. They are now waiting for whoever wins the Winnipeg and Nashville series to decide who the conference champion is. And I'm telling you that it's only happened two other times in history, and each of them are 50 years apart. Hey, I'll give it to you that, that it's weird. Like 50 years, 50 years, and 50 years? That's just crazy. Although if I have to wait 50 years for my Dodgers to win a World Series, I might commit to it. <laughs> I might kill myself if that's just okay. Not, no I, team I, I ever like ever wins Should've anything, so there's that. I doomed Winnipeg when I started rooting for them. It's my fault. It's my <laughs> fault. They'd have swept Nashville if it wasn't for me. <laughs> it's true, though. You saw what happened when you turned on the one Winnipeg game we've watched this year. <laughs> Man, can't. Mm. It's true. I don't know. It, it's just sports is one of those things you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I guess. It's like, like I always say, it's why they play the game. You can't just hand them the championship trophy because if you did, when the favorite gets knocked out, everyone would be like, well, how did right? that happen? I don't know. It's going to be an interesting week, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess you could use the word interesting. He's asleep on the floor, being a weirdo because he doesn't want to cuddle with me. Yeah, he's oh, being yeah? a g- t- giant jerk. Actually, now he's asleep by his food bowl, but he was asleep on the floor. <laughs> That's interesting. He's He's uh, not really. It's what he does every night when we're laying here watching TV, and he decides he's going to lay on the floor instead of lay on the couch. Well, he's just doing the same thing. He does it a lot. It's weird. So yeah, he's well. He's been laying there since we came back from his yog jog, but pretty much down there. He's a dingus. Sleeping on the floor instead of on the nice comfy couch. And there's an entire side of the couch open that he could sleep on and not have to contend with anybody because you're not here. No, he's going to be a dingus and lay on the floor. Yeah. Now he's back under the coffee table now. He's, yes, he really he's is. My gosh, I went downstairs to check the mail. And he was like, he was trying to make a break for it because we'd just been on the phone. So he thought you were coming home. And I was like, well, he can come with me. But I didn't even put his harness on him to go down to the mailbox. And so I'm trying to figure out which mailbox key on your key ring is actually the right one. I figured it out, obviously. And all of a sudden, Yogi is like taking off around the corner. I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus. He's going to run away. It's going to be the worst day of my entire life. Nope. He saw Daniela and decided to run away from me, but she caught him. Because he's just an asshole. So, he was happy he got to see somebody on his escapade downstairs. That's funny. He that doesn't mean that. he has to scare the hell out of me by running away. Jerk. That's right, Yogi. I'm talking to you. You're a jerk. He's fired. The hostile takeover. It's going to be Victoria's podcast network now because I fired the dog. <laughs> he's not fired because he's the CEO. He can't be fired. 
Only the board of directors. Well, can that means I'm the that. board of directors. So there. <laughs> That's kind of fun. But it's been a long day. It's like weird because it's like 11:30 here, and I'm kind of tired. Like it's 11:30 here, but at the same time, what scares me is that the time I need to wake up is going to be like 4 a.m. there. Well, yeah. But to be fair, crazy. you're awake at that time anyway. Well, yeah, that's true. But I am also normally, well, actually, I guess I normally go to bed around now. You're day, normally I? asleep on the couch by this time, yes. <laughs> Unless we're watching something exciting. You usually don't sleep through, like, Teen Mom, because the people are so dumb. Yeah, true. Anyway, well, I think this was a success. Um, first time podcasting. Yeah, we're going to have apart. two more podcasts a million miles apart. Right? Two more? Yeah. <sighs> two more. Yeah, and then we'll be yep. back together Thursday night. So. Well, okay. Alrighty. Well, I guess that means good night, right. everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Hi everyone, this is Mike, and I truly hope you enjoyed this show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher so as to never miss an episode. If by chance you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to Yogi's Podcast Network dot com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.